He's also using Resonator cards, which uh, surprisingly synergize with the Labyrinth cards because they're all Fiends. Yeah, definitely. Those cards out of the Crimson King structure deck, really impactful. I can't wait to see how they're going to line up with those Labyrinth cards. Yeah, and in addition, he managed to fit in a small engine using Diavel Star and Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. So we'll see how all of that lines up. But it looks like Vaughn is starting out with Ariana, which is exactly where he wants to be, running Labyrinth. And perhaps, just as importantly, starting out going first, which is where you want to be when you're running Labyrinth. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially against a deck like Adventure Horse Phantom Knight. It's such a strong deck that really excels at going first. But, I mean, the Adventure package is something that we've kind of seen falling out of favor, but really good going first or second. You know, you have access to Draco back to be able to try and clear up the board a little bit before you have to commit to your normal summon. Yep. But it does look like it's just going to be that normal summon. I think he grabbed he got, Big Welcome. He got Big Welcome, with it, which is a common play when you have Arion on, on the Standby. field, especially, Indra. since you can return yes. it to your hand with the big welcome after summoning a monster. And, and he does have a second trap card in his back row, which could be anything, but happens to be Welcome Labyrinth. Yep, so he's going to be looking to get Lady and Lovely on the field here on his first turn. And so he's going to be summoning Lovely first. Or is that Lady? No, that's Lady. Uh, lady. That's Lady. Lady, lady, lady first. Silver Castle. So uh, we'll see. Anything here. No. So now he's probably going to go big uh, welcome. He might big welcome for Coop Clock, return it to his hand, and then we'll, sure. he'll be able to activate whichever trap he sets with Lady if he wants to go for a virus early on. That would be really uh, cool. But we'll see where he goes with this. He may already have the Coop Clock as well. Yeah, see, the Labyrinth Coop Clock is like one of the, I think, incredible cards in the deck because it really like lets you access, like, you're able to access traps from your deck with the Lady, yep. right? But being able to use it right away, I uh, wasn't able to see what trap he set he, there. He got the Daruma Cannon, so, oh, okay. he, so he's... Sure. So to the big welcome Labyrinth, he chained Lady Labyrinth's effect, set the Daruma Cannon from his deck, and he's just going to special summon Lovely Labyrinth, uh, which allows him to return a monster on the field as he resolves the effect of Big Welcome. He'll return Lady Labyrinth to his hand. And now a monster. Since a monster left the field by a normal trap effect, he can use the Lady Labyrinth's effect to destroy a random card that Devin has. Yep, going to try and take a card out of play before Devin has a chance to use it. We'll see what he's going to get here. Six cards, going to roll and match it with the number to make it random. One, it's going to be that first card. Ooh, he gets to take a card out of the hand, but it's going to be a card that's pretty good in the yes. graveyard. That's Ragged Gloves, and you're going to be able to banish that from the graveyard to send any so Phantom Knight card to the graveyard. Yeah, but now the lady's going to come back down to the field. Yeah. Special summon Fenrir. Yeah, I think Devin's deck is probably full of cards that are good in the graveyard, so I'm not sure that was the best hit, but Vaughn doesn't know that, obviously. He doesn't uh, know what he's playing against. He, he now knows that he missed a Fenrir, which would have been a much, <laughs> much more bad play, but Fenrir on the field is fantastic, already putting some pressure on Vaughn. At least he was we'll able to use those monster effects Fenrir. before the Fenrir was on the field. That's for sure. And now it's going to grab another copy of Kashdira Fenrir. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure that Vaughn plays any virus cards then either, so go. I don't know if... Uh, an alternate line of play was an option there. Effect. True. And now he has M. Seti, Discarding. so he's going to be able to send M. Seti and another card from his hand to the graveyard to add the King's Sarcophagus, and then he gets to draw Nibiru's a card. Cost. Nibiru is not going to be too helpful here in this matchup. Oh, sure. Vaughn uses Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, something I'm and then, and all too effects. familiar with. And it looks like it might Targeting. be a quarter century Seeker Rare Ash Blossom out of the rarity collection that just Your released this weekend. Silver Castle? That's really pretty. I know that's yes. the card a lot of people are looking to pick up, and that is the Quarter Century Ash. I know I opened so many booster packs trying to get it, and I did. Very nice. It was, was nice. So, it always feels bad to lose out on Imseti's uh, effect to the Ash Blossom because you scales. invest two cards into that play sure. only to be stopped. Um, but the silver lining for Vaughn is that even though Devin can use his Fenrir's effect, it can't target the, the Lady Labyrinth since there is a face-down trap card on Vaughn's field, so he banishes Lovely Labyrinth instead. Very true. And uh, now he's going to normal effect, summon costs. the Fanite Torn Scale. And now you see the synergy with the Fenrir, and he's going to be able to discard it to try and send a Fanite card to the graveyard. But, but Vaughn has effect Veiler to negate it. And now Devin is thinking about his option. He still has that Ragged Gloves in the graveyard. He can banish the Phantom Knight uh, Ragged Special. Gloves to send any Phantom Knight card to the graveyard, but he has the boots already in hand. The big thing about Phantom Knights is you want to get two level know, threes correct. on the field, correct. and then you're going to be able to link them away into Cherubini. Thinking here. Looks like he's going to consider his options. He knows that he has the Karma Can set, but no Cuckoo Clock, so he's not going to be able to activate it just quite yet. The clock could be in his hand. True. Could be waiting to catch him off guard. This would be the time I'd want to probably Karma Can it before the Cherubini. I guess you could wait for the Cherubini. No, no, because you want to keep the Torn Scales and the Boots on the field, probably. So it's going to be tough we if he doesn't will. have that clock, because this was an excellent opening hand here from Devin. Two. No, no access to Cherubini? the adventure packages yet, but we do see Link Summon coming from that Cherubini, oh. also out of Cherubini the rarity collection. Sending cost. Yep. 
A lot of nice rarity cards we've seen on the table so send. far. Yeah, I think the collector rares are my favorite probably out of uh, the Angel rarity Pope. collection. Those are really nice. The, the, the new prismatic style ultimate rare is cool. I do still like the ultimate yeah, rares that you're going to still be able to find in the OTS packs. Because the, the OTS yep. ultimate rare, a little different from the rarity collection, but it's not going away. The OTS ultimate rares are still going to be just as beautiful as you see on that Castillo fin rear. The new ultimate rare is just something special for the rarity collection specifically. Those quarter century rares really pop, though. Oh, Those yeah. Those are really nice, and uh, I like the watermark, like the Speed Duel. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the well. 25th, so the 25th logo. The anniversary I, watermark's really cool. I love that. So it looks like when you meet Cherubini, he's going to use the effect to send Greaves. down uh, Cloak. Torn Scales effect to summon. And now he's going to banish the Cloak to add Stained Greaves to the hand. And since uh, Phantom Knight was banished, Torn Scales can special summon back from the graveyard. Uh, I will not and then the level. since the Phantom Knight was special summon, he can special summon Stained Greaves from the hand. Hmm. Looks like Devin has no hand, but fortunately for Hold him, it. Phantom Knight decks <laughs> typically just use their cards in the graveyard and on the field anyway. Very true. So he's going to go straight into the Phantom Knight Breaksword. So he's going to use the effect on itself to destroy itself uh, and another card. Sword. Can't target, target the lady. So he's going to go after the Karma Cannon. Uh, break sword effect so since he's destroying the Breaksword, he's going to be able to special summon back two Phantom Knights. As and they'll be... Yep. As level four monsters, uh, play that I'm Break sure Duel Links targeting. players are very familiar with. Now going second, uh, when Fan Knights are going second and they're able to access a rank four, Fan there's Greaves. a specific rank four that's pretty scary. Uh, it's not a rank four, but it's Raider's Oops. Knight. Yep. Then you can go into something like Arc Rebellion Exceeds Dragon, so and then you can get a lot of damage four. out really quickly. So we'll have to see if that's um. what he goes for. With no back row on Vaughn's field, the Lady Labyrinth is now vulnerable to effects that target or destroy it. Let's go Love's Effects. Indeed. See where he goes from here. He's going to wings. banish the Ragged Gloves to send Phantom Knight Wings. Wings you'll be able to banish from the graveyard to special one back yep. of Phantom Knight, but it'll be banished oh. afterwards. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Three. Let's okay. see if he does go for that Arc Rebellion. <laughs> it would be pretty beefy, I think. Oh, yeah, it would be 47, 24 on Fenrir. That's 67, 71. And it only has 7,600. He's going to need to get more monsters on the field if he wants to have a really big Arc Rebellion Exceeds Dragon because it can negate the effects of all their face-up cards on the field, and then it gains all their attacks. But it's the only monster that can attack that turn. But we'll have That's to see. That. that can be huge. He is overlaying for a rank four. It could be Raider's Knight. Yep. It is indeed Raider's Knight. Raider's Knight effects. Raider's Knight's a rank four that can rank up into, rank up into a rank five. and. Yep. yep. Here comes Arc Rebellion Exceeds Dragon. Uh, Just as you effects, predicted. Targeting Breaksword Summon. Oh, there, there's the more damage that he's going to need. Arc Rebellion he's effect. Going to use the wings to bring back the Breaksword. Battle negates pick? everything. Yes. He negates and everything, gains, the, gains attack. the attack of every uh, monster on the field, so it's exactly. enormous now. It has a base attack of 3,000 already, so, so it's... Gains 24, 3K, 2K. Yep, that's 74. and 500. That's 9,000. Oh, that's it's 10,500. Yeah. It's way oh, more damage than it needs. Way more attack points. Yep. Over the 16, that's going to be over 8,001 attack. And Devin's showing the power of Phantom Knights with an excellent hand going second. Arc Rebellion Exceeds Dragon is just one of those cards that can really steal games if you're not prepared for it. And Devin's showing you, I can go first and set up a huge board. But if I go second, you don't have any defense. Devin now one win away from moving on 2-0 to an excellent start for the tournament. Yeah, don't forget Labyrinth players can also keep resetting cards with Lovely Labyrinth's effect and also set them from the deck with Lady Labyrinth so they don't need to draw those crap cards mm -hmm. uh, to just keep that steady flow of crap cards coming. Definitely, and it looks like we are opening up the same way, but this time he's able to access the Ku Clock, so this might be the difference maker from that game number one. Yeah, I think uh, getting Ku Clock in game one could have at least gave him access to the Darum account in early on and yep. perhaps helped him, but he's going to Ku Clock now, so that whatever trap he sets, he can play since Ariana is on sure. his field. Yep. We will activate Lady Labyrinth. Yes. He's using Lady Labyrinth's effect since he used Ariana and Kuklok's effect. Welcome. And there's the big welcome. Results. He's going <laughs> to chain the Lady Results. Labyrinth's effect, so now he will be able to set a normal trap card of his choice from his deck. Let's take see what he takes. Now, that's like something to know. If your opponent activates a trap card and they're playing Labyrinth, you're going to want to chain to it because you don't want them to chain the lady to their own trap that's card. Right. Chain anything. You don't have to chain a card that actually inter you know, that interacts with the trap card like Ash Blossom. Just anything will cut them off. He's taking full force virus. That's for monsters with 1,500, 1500 or fewer defense. It's in my side deck. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's in Vaughn's side deck as well, too. That's a cool one. Well, not one of the more 
well played or known played viruses because it kind of came out a little later on, but definitely can be really good against certain strategies. We'll I, have to see how strong it is yep. against the Phantom Knight. I find it to be better than Eradicator virus pretty oh, often. Okay. Pretty all. I mean, it depends on the matchup, of course. But as he fin finishes resolving the effect of Big Welcome, he special summons the lovely Labyrinth, returns the Lady Labyrinth to his hand, and it looks like he's going to go for a random card again. Yep, let's see if you can hit the Fenrir this time instead of something like a Phantom Knight monster. One. Oh no, it's one again. Okay, oh, that's also not great. I that's do think not great. He, I think he does have right in his hand though, because I happen to see the right. So not as beneficial, but otherwise it would be a free uh, card. You can just banish the Water Enchantress from that graveyard to add Ride of Aramis here from the deck to the hand. Yeah, I mean, hitting that card, if, it's, if he ends up activating the virus, is completely irrelevant because the virus uh, could hit the card he discards. So it's yep. not the best sequencing, but if he had no other way <coughs> of doing it, it's the way to go with. So he's going to lead off with that big welcome. The effect is good. Okay, so he does. But he reset. So he's going to be able to get the Ku Clock back as well. I missed him setting that with Lovely Labyrinth's effect, but I assume that's how he got it back on the field. Yeah, it's sitting right there, and he's going to chain the lady since there's no chains here from that's fine. Devin. He's going to be able to special summon lady to the field. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm surprised he's letting it resolve, actually, instead of using the full force virus, getting rid of the monsters that it hits, and then discarding a card from his hand. Mm. Yep. Oh, I see what you're saying, waiting and then having more, an option to hit like a spell card Correct. or something. Exactly. That would make a lot of sense. Looks like he does, he's going to summon the yeah, Stoby Torby and then I think return Stoby Torby to his hand. We may see him decline to use the Lovely Labyrinth effect in an effort to maybe use it later in the turn. So he's going to draw a card here and it does look like he is using Lovely. So draw a card and destroy a card at random from Devin's hand. So he is doing it. He might be planning to time the full force. Like one uh, monster's already on the field. Yeah, when a normal summon is used or would however else. I could see that. I could definitely see that being in Vaughn's game that's plan hard. here in this game. Right. Now, that's a valid strategy. Yes. Let's see if he can hit. If he hits the right, that would be pretty funny because he's just going to be able to add it right back <laughs> with that Water Enchantress. No, hits the cloak. Hit a card, yeah. It's going to be able to add a different card. So now he has to manage the full force virus with him being able to add with the cloak. Cloak can sure. add Fog Blade too, I believe. Uh, but it can mainly just going to use to get like Phantom Knight boots. But yeah, even if you full force fire the Phantom Knight monsters, they go to the graveyard. You still banish them from the graveyard to keep summoning and finding more <laughs> Phantom Knight cards. This is really cool. He was able to draw a card with Ariana and then special summon a yep. Resonator from his hand with its effect. Anything? Ooh, Soul Resonator no. out of the Crimson King structure deck, and he's also going to add the Shangrelier. Okay, so now he has Stovey Torby, Shangrelier, and. Ku Clock is in the grave, and he'll be able to return it to his hand once he uses the sure. effect of either the Stoby Torby or Shang Dragon Glier. I'm not sure which one he used there, but... I'm going to guess Stoby Torby, just because it's on top. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the way I would do it. They so. do the same thing, yeah, so they it do doesn't this. really matter. <laughs> <laughs> he sets Welcome Labyrinth from the deck, okay. um, and he'll bring his Ku Clock back. Yeah. It's only relevant if he tries to use the same sure. one again. Time's up, time's up. Time's up, Ku Clock's here. He <laughs> <laughs> really puts you on a clock because these crafts just are activated every single turn. I never thought yep. of Ku Clock uh, <laughs> being so menacing. It is. It's one of the strongest cards in the deck, I Telling swear. me time's up. <laughs> time's up. <laughs> Let's see if, what, uh, if he's, I guess he just set Welcome Mavis. Labyrinth, so the Ku Clock will let him use the Welcome Labyrinth this turn Activate. as well. Or one of, yeah, yeah, that's the one he set this turn. Yes. Uh, but he has not used Lady Labyrinth's effect, so if he activates one of his other trap cards and sets a trap, he'll be able to use that instead. Very true. That's very heads up. But now he's seeing the right, probably Vaughn being like, oh, good thing I hit the Enchantress since he also had Ride of Ramos here in the hand. So Ride of Ramos here, it's been a while since we've seen the Adventure cards, but it's going to special summon that 2000-2000 Adventure Faithful token. Adventure. Too strong for the full force virus. <laughs> and then Fateful Adventure is going to be placed in the spell and trap card zone from the deck. Not worried about infinite. Oh, he knows that's the full force virus zone, so we're going to put it there so he doesn't have to worry about getting hit by something Any like here. infinite permanence. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I don't know where. From the looks of it, that full force virus may not be particularly effective, and the best thing about it might be um, it's uh, it allowing the uh, Lady Labyrinth to set a trap from the deck that he can activate thanks to Ku Clock. Definitely. If he gets a Daruma right. Cannon, it gets rid of the token. Yeah, token can't go face down, but it will be out <laughs> taken off the field. Yes. 
I was going to say it was the graveyard, but it doesn't go there either. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just gone. <laughs> it vanishes. <laughs> it vanishes. Time's up for the token. <laughs> Time is up. And now the Enchantress adds another copy of Right to the hand. This is actually useful because you do. He's, now he's going to use Faithful Adventures effect to add uh, well, Monster. So he's going to add Wandering right. Griffin Rider from the deck to the hand. And now he has to send a card from his hand to the graveyard. Probably going to just send that Right that he added. Unless he wants to put a Phantom Knight card in the, the right. graveyard. Nope, going to be the right. You are right about the right. Indeed. Uh, effect to summon. So now he's going to activate the quick effect of Wandering Griffin Rider Spell Summon since he has the adventure token on the field. No. And that's going to provide a negation for monster effect yeah. spell or trap. Now Vaughn, okay, Vaughn People allows it to hit the field. To search for equip spell. Sure. And yep, since the monster is summoned, he's going to be able to add Draco back. The rideable dragon. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it is the rideable dragon. He is indeed rideable. He's going to be able to equip, he can either equip it or add it to his hand, and then he can target a card on Vaughn's side of the field and return it to the hand. Looks like he decides to add it to the hand with Faithful Adventure. Thank you. Uh, equip to the token. Yes. And equips it. Let's, Let's see what he decides to return. He's not going to be able to target back effect. the lady. Targeting the set. It looks like he's going to try and force out the full force virus now so he can't catch him off on a uh, different time. I might have I might have gone for the one I don't know instead of the full force virus because he's going to use it at some point. Yeah, but no, it doesn't look like he's particularly vulnerable to the full force either at this point in time. Well, did he target the one next to it now? No, it looked, I don't know. He's going to chain. I think he... Maybe he did target that yeah, one. That I think would he targeted the one all the way on the right. I just don't know what that card is. Yeah. The, the one on the far right is Full Force Virus. So then he must have targeted Full Force. Yeah. But it looks like he's just considering chaining the Imperm for some okay, reason. So but he... Oh. Hmm. So he's going to yeah. Full Force Virus tribute off the lady. The Imperm wouldn't have helped. Yeah, I think just he was maybe... Like his, oh, he was thinking about using the Imperm to force out the mm -hmm. Griffin Rider in the gate so he could chain the Full Force Virus. But I think he is better off trying to force out the Griffin Negate on the full force virus uh, and just saving his infirm for something else later on in the turn. Uh, that's could be. I'm not sure of everything in Devin's hand, but I see a lot of spells in there. That resolves. Saw a lot of spells, so, actually. Yep. Look like. So, yeah, they're just the uh, Fog Blade and Torn Scales. And putting the Torn Scale in the graveyard, not a big deal since he already has the cloak. When he banishes the cloak, he's going to be able to bring back that Torn Scales. Uh, really quick. Sorry. <coughs> Yeah, just a little bit of a slow play warning here. Vaughn took a little too long maybe to consider if he wanted to chain the card there. Oh, resolution good. But that's going to add three minutes to their clock. Had he used Lady Labyrinth's effect that turn? Let's go. I don't think so, effect. no. Search. Yes. Unless that's how he got the... No, because he said the welcome with love, right? We'll search for... Um, yeah, because he didn't use welcome no, he turn one. He set the welcome with his... Uh, and Draglier or Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so he definitely didn't do it. Yeah, because there's no nothing, nothing we got reset to the back row. Yeah. yeah, so it's unfortunate he missed out. I guess that we'll could be why he was uh, contemplating boots. chaining the Imperm uh, to activate the, lovely, the Lady Some. Labyrinth effect. Very true. So he's going to banish the cloak to add boots. And since the Fan Knight was banished, Fan Knight Tornscale is going to return from the graveyard. And um, now, since he controls that Phantom Knight, he's going to be able to special summon boots from the hand. But he's going to first use the effect to discard to send a Phantom Knight card. Gets that fog blade in the graveyard. He can also send a monster. He wants to summon back like Ragged Gloves. Do you think he's going to be? He's looking for Arc Rebellion again. Uh, <laughs> or the, the maybe or the attack points on the field to make it happen to right. allow it to win the game. I think so. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, there's four thousand just with his adventure package right there. We know Vaughn has infinite impermanence. Yeah, so he could use the break sword here, target that infinite impermanence. But he would break sword? he would need to use the infinite permanence on this break sword right yeah, here. Yeah, because then he can't get the four, effect? the yep. level fours. Target break sword, target this set. So obviously he's going to chain it. Let's see if that forces out the wandering griffin rider. It could, but that will reduce the total number of attack points on the field. Mm, that break could also sword. be problematic for Devin. Thinking. Devin seems to know his deck pretty well here. I'm a big fan of Night Fan. Spoiler alert, I'm a fan of all, all Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> cards. I, I always catch myself saying, like, oh, I love this deck. I love Same. this deck. Yu-Gi-Oh is so diverse. It's one of the only card games where you can just, when you're playing a different deck, you feel like you're playing a completely different strategy. Like, it's not like you're just doing the same thing with different shades. It's, it's completely different, night and day. It's true. There's, a, there's really good flavor in every deck. Oh, definitely. That 
resolves. Devin decides he doesn't need to go for Arc yeah. Rebellion, so he's going to let okay. Imperm resolve. Uh, uh, Neither you received either. It's still play warning. Yeah, Nevi, right? No. Okay. Well, it's a warning. Just, you know, let's make sure the pace of play is good. Okay. So, not a, not a warning, but you make sure your stuff is on straight on your zone. Yeah. Did that infinite impermanence target the Griffin Rider or the Break Sword? It looks like uh, it the Break Sword. Yeah, it was Devin thinking about okay. negating the infinite impermanence of the Griffin Rider. Okay, so that will prevent uh, the Griffin Rider, the Break Sword, from being destroyed and prevent Devin from getting the level four monsters he would need to make Raiders Knight. Yeah, but he'll still droplet. be able to access. Break sword. So he's going to use Forbidden Droplet, send the Break Sword to have the... and negate. The Ariana. Ariana. So now he has a graveyard full of cards. He's can, effect. If he can find a way to go into Rusty Bardish and then bring back that Break Sword, he'll be able to destroy some cards. It's going to be about cleaning up the field now and trying to win with that Wandering Griffin Rider plus we'll maybe send. like an interruption. Wings. So the Ragged Gloves yeah. is going to send down Wings. So now he has Wings and Fog Blade in the graveyard. Uh, he got to put the Phantom Knight Tortoise Scale back in the graveyard since effects. it was used for an XC summon. Targeting. So now he's going to banish wings, torn special summon back torn scales. So. All right, there he is. Uh, fog blade effect. Same Targeting effect, special boots. summon a different one. Boots and torn scales back to the field. Oh, he could just fog go blade. for another break sword. I didn't even think about this. He can just do it again. Break sword. <laughs> there he is, second break sword. Break sword now he's going to go for the Targeting welcome itself. labyrinth. Targeting. That's so funny. I think that's why he was thinking. He was probably doing the math and adding up, making sure he could still get to it. This is a tough one, actually, because if he chains the Welcome Labyrinth, which he can, it could add, depending on what he gets, it could add attack points to the field. And he'd use that to droplet make, to, to have the attack already. Or, well, yeah. I guess it, which is irrelevant because now he gain gains less attack. and fewer attack points. But, <laughs> but the, a monster being added to the field with the Welcome Labyrinth uh, <laughs> will increase the attack points of Arc Rebellion. Indeed. So he doesn't chain it here, but I don't even think it matters. It's still 4,000 plus the lovely Seven, lovely's 25? 29. 29. Uh, oh, yeah, that's effect? still going to be enough. So we're going to have 9,900 attack points. <laughs> Over 850. The, uh, did I even add it to points? Let's see. Yep. 2, 4, 7. Yeah, 99 plus the Resonator and the Ari Ariana's attack points. So uh, that's more than yeah. enough damage if so this again, resolves. 2, Plus 29. Uh, we'll go battle phase. Time for game. <laughs> this is oh, yeah. Phantom yeah, Knight Power going second, really showing so, you how he can uh, use the power of the Arc Rebellion Exceeds Dragon Rebellion. and Raider's Knight. Rebellion two really powerful cards. And the, the worst part so is if he goes first, he's going to have a good board two, also that yeah. you're going to have to deal with. So plus going first and going second, Devin really is showing you why this deck is back on the radar. Plus we didn't even get to see the Horus cards. This is just so Adventure Phantom Knight. This deck has existed. <laughs> this is nothing new. We didn't get to see any of the new cards. Six. We could have been playing Phantom Knights the whole time. Yeah. I still have my deck, you know, in sleeves. I would uh, never take it apart because I just love the Phantom Knight strategy so much. But it's awesome to see them back in action here uh, at a YCS level. 10K. Yeah, very cool. I did not anticipate uh, a, the uh, Arc Rebellion yeah. Xyz Dragon <laughs> instant win two games in a <laughs> row against Labyrinth. Particularly given how defensive the Labyrinth